My, my, my. <laughs> Who was Him? He was God in the flesh. Amen? Yeah, Hallelujah. The Word. The Bible calls Him the Word. Amen? Right. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And when she put her faith in Him, the Word, Amen? Come on. And her faith touched His Word, Come on. she was healed. Yes, amen. The Bible says that He sent His Word to heal our disease. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that powerful this morning? We've been talking about having faith in God's Word. We started out talking about faith and what real faith really is. What being a person of faith is. And as I stated before, just because you have doubts don't mean you don't have faith. You remember the man in the Bible that said, Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. Amen. Amen. We have been taught a mindset that unless you believe, unless you become some kind of superhuman, which none of us are, there ain't no one of us in here this morning that have not doubted. There's not one of us in here this morning that won't doubt again. There's only been one person that ever walked this earth that was perfect, and it ain't you. Amen. 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 It ain't me. Jesus Christ. Amen. The only begotten Son of God. The only perfect one that ever walked on this earth. And we started out in the book of James. Go there with me this morning. We'll read our, our foundational scripture. Just about every sermon that I start anymore becomes a series. I'm so long-winded one day, don't get it, so we have to do it two or three Sundays in a row. <clears throat> Just split them up instead of trying Amen. to preach them all one Sunday. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. James, the second chapter and the 18th verse. James, the second chapter the 18th verse. The Bible says... Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And James says, I will show you my faith by my works. Amen? Yeah. And what we've been learning is that real faith is whenever you trust His Word. Regardless of the doubts, regardless of the way it looks in the natural, regardless of what the devil tells you, what your brother or sister tells you, or what your old carnal mind or flesh tells you, faith is saying, God, I don't understand it. I don't see how it's going to work out, but I know what your word says, and I stand on that today. Amen. That's what real faith is. When Abraham took Isaac up the mountain, he didn't go up the mountain having faith in the sacrifice or faith in his own ability. He went up there having faith that God had promised him yeah. that his seed would be as the stars in the heaven, Brother Bill. Yeah. That his seed would be innumerable. And that that seed would come through Isaac. So when he walked up that hill and he looked over at Isaac and he said, don't worry, God will supply. You know how he knew God would supply? Because his word had told him that he would supply. And God is not a man that he should lie. And His Word is always... The only thing you can count on today is God's Word. Amen? You might tell me something today and you may not be able to come through on it. Amen? Amen. Brother Bill told me about... He, he brought a couch out to my storage building. You don't know if I use that, do you, Brother Bill? He brought a couch out to my storage building and he said, I'll be back get this Tuesday. Yeah. That's about four years ago. Amen? I see, and I use that because a lot of times we make plans and they fall through. We make promises to people and they fall through. We tell people we'll be there this day at this time. And they, Yesterday morning I had to meet the owner of the building here at 10.30. He said, I'll be there at 10.30. Guess what? I was here at 10.30, but he wasn't. Amen? We make promises or we say things that either because of scheduling or because things happen in life, whatever the reason is, most of the time we don't intentionally leave a couch in somebody's storage building for four years. Amen? Stuff comes up. Most of the time, we don't intentionally tell somebody I'll be there at 10 and we don't get there on purpose. Amen? It's because things happen. Because things, circumstances change. Oh, but thank God today if He tells you something. Amen? If God tells you something, He'll do it. His Word will never, ever return void. 
And we've been trying to get our old carnal mind to understand that the only thing we can put our faith in this morning that is stable is not man's word, not the almighty dollar. And I told you the other day, it ain't so almighty anymore. Amen? Can't buy very much for a dollar anymore. But you can't put your faith in the dollar. You can't put your faith in the stock market. But you can put your faith in God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, you can put your faith in God's word. Say, so what's that going to do with what James is saying? Because James was saying... I will show you my faith by my works. Amen. When you believe God's word, when you choose to trust God's word, then you begin to stand on God's word. Amen? I'll show you my faith because even though my sons and daughters are dead, even though my cattle have been taken away, even though the only thing i got left is a nagging wife that tells me to curse God and die, I still stand on God's Word and say, I know my Redeemer liveth. When He has tried me, I will come forth as gold. Amen? Because we trust His Word. Hallelujah. We talked about the little woman that had the meal barrel and the cruise of oil that we preachers love to preach about. Boy, that's a great, that's a great example, ain't it? You can use that in a thousand different ways, a thousand different sermons. Whenever she walked away from that fence after the prophet said, bring me some bread, she didn't go over to the meal barrel with faith in the meal barrel. She didn't go thinking, well, this family will soon be over because she, done, she was done so deep into it that she thought her and her son was fixing to die. Yeah. And they would have. But she went to the meal barrel to make that prophet a cake, not because she had faith in the prophet, <laughs> but because of the Word of God that it came out of His mouth. Amen. He said, if you go, if you make me a cake first, oh, hallelujah, and God will sustain, God will provide for you throughout this famine, throughout this time of need. So she goes to the meal barrel. She goes to the cruise of oil, having faith that God will do what He said He would do. I got up this morning knowing that I'm saved. Brother Billy, why? Because you felt like it? No, I don't have nothing to do with feeling. The sooner you learn that, the better off you'll be. I didn't get up this morning and say, I'm saved because I feel saved. There are times I feel saved. Amen? There are other times I don't feel so holy. Amen? But it doesn't have anything to do with my feeling. I've got faith in His Word that He said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I've done that. Amen? I've got faith in His Word this morning because it says, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I've done that. Amen. Amen. My faith is in His Word, not in the way I feel. And the sooner we understand that, the better off we will be. Who else we talk about? We talk about Jairus and his daughter. That they came and said, she's dead. Amen. And Jesus speaks to him and says, be not afraid, only believe. Amen. Amen. He tells him to have faith in God. And what happens? He goes and raises Jairus' daughter from the dead. Why? Because Jairus believed in God's Word. We learned that from the beginning, the Bible says in John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, the Word of God is the only thing that is everlasting and eternal. It has been from the beginning. It will be in the end. Jesus said heaven and earth will pass away. Think about that. Heaven. This heaven we're always talking about. You know, that won't be your final abode. The Bible says it'll be a new heaven. Yeah. And a new earth. Amen? Amen? Heaven will pass away, but His Word will remain. The earth as you know it will pass away, but His Word will remain. His Word will remain. It is eternal. It is everlasting. It is the only thing that you can put your hope in and your faith in this morning. That is the Word of God. You cannot put it in a denomination. Ask the thousands who have and find out that they have been disappointed. Amen? You cannot put it in a certain doctrine or a certain religion. You cannot put it in a man. Man will let you down. Over the years we have seen that in a big way. Big name preachers who people have looked up to, put their faith in, even said, oh, if the rapture takes place, I hope I'm in their hip pocket. Amen? Amen? And then these preachers who were so big in so many people's eyes, they messed up. Guess what? They were human. Amen? Oh my goodness, that sometimes that lets the air out of our balloon. Amen? To find out that a preacher is human. Wow. 
Amen. Amen. We're not some kind of super super clone robot, amen, or some angelic being that never has faults and never messes up and never falls down. We're human. Amen. amen. We're human. And whenever they found that out, because they had their faith in the man instead of the God that the man served, amen, they became disappointed. Some of them gave up. Some of them turned away. Some of them just threw their hands up in the air and said, well, ain't nobody real then. No, the truth of the matter is we are all flesh. All of us fail, but God's Word does not. Amen? You can count on God's Word this morning. It has been tried, and it is faithful, and it is true. Amen? There is no turning back the fact. It doesn't matter. There ain't a devil in hell. Satan could line up every devil that he's got. Actually, there ain't no devils in hell anyway. But Satan could line up every demon he's got. Every devil he's got. Do you know the devil ain't in hell yet? You know we always talk about this? Send him back to hell. He ain't been there yet. We're going to teach a message not too far down the road. As a matter of fact, these are leading up to it. But things that are not in the Word of God. And a lot of those things are about the devil. Things that we've been taught about the devil. Things that we've been taught about angels. Things that we've been taught about the afterlife. Or a lot of the things that we've been taught about the world and the, the signs of the end of time are not in God's Word. Amen. The devil is not in hell. But if he can line up every demon that he's got at his disposal... They cannot stop God's Word from taking place in your life. As long as you put your faith. They but one person can stop God's Word from taking fruition in your life. You. If you fail to trust it, if you fail to put your faith in it, you're the only one that can stop it. The devil can't. Amen. The only one that can stop all things working together for your good is you. Amen? It says all things work together for the good of those what? That love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. If you cease to love the Lord, it ain't going to work for your good. If you cease to be called according to His purpose, if you're no longer in His will, but you've turned and went the other way, if you've decided you're not going to serve God anymore, you can't claim that promise. But if today you have resolved that I'm a child of the King, that I'm going to live for Him, that my faith is in Jesus, there's not a devil in hell that can stop you. See, I said it again. There's not a devil today that can stop you from having the promises of God because His Word is true. His Word is true. It is unstoppable. The Bible says in Psalms 12 and 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. There's nothing that can stop God's Word. Nothing that can stop God's Word from taking place in your life. If you will put your faith in That's why Paul said, I am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed. Why? Because he put his faith in God's Word. And you see today, God and His Word are inseparable. That's why John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was, God, was with God, and the Word was God. And then drop down to verse 14 in the first chapter of John, it says, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. His Word became a bodily form and walked this earth. But His Word has always been. All the way from the beginning. Over there in the book of Genesis, whenever you go over there and read in the first chapter where, it's, where it says that the earth was without form, it was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. Let there be light. And guess what happened? Mm -hmm. There was light. Even if there had been opposition to try and stop it, it wouldn't have mattered. Because when God speaks it, it happens. If when God begins to speak something, if it did not exist when He began to speak it, it would by the time He was through. <laughs> oh, can I say it again? I doubt it. If when God begins to speak something, Brother Bill, if it does not exist by the time He's through, it will. Because when He says, let there be light, there has to be light. Amen? Amen? Because when God speaks, His Word is unstoppable. It is immovable. It is eternal. It is forever. You can count on God's Word today. We can count on the Word of God. Amen. Two different people from two different areas. One from, I don't even, she's from, I forgot where she's from, Ohio maybe or somewhere. Wrote us this week talking about how much she enjoyed the preaching because since she hadn't heard old-fashioned preaching, like that since she was a girl in the church of God. Forgot where she said she's from. Then we got an email from Canada, New Brunswick, I think. 
from a woman up there that said that she loved the preaching. And it ain't got nothing to do with the messenger. It's the message that we're preaching. Amen? It's the, oh, it's the Word of God. You know why people are saying, hey, I haven't heard that because churches have quit preaching Amen. the Word. Amen. Amen? I like what Brother Bill always says. He said, when he called me, he didn't call me to preach my opinion. He called me to preach the Word. Amen? That's why we've got so many people that are starving to death spiritually today because there's not enough people preaching what thus saith God. Oh, we got plenty of them preaching what thus saith man. Amen? But God's Word is the only thing that is eternal. God's Word is the only thing, Brother Rodney, that's going to see you through. God's Word is the only thing today that's going to be able to see you to the end Amen. if you'll put your faith in God's Word. Amen. It was there in the beginning. Amen. Amen. Jesus said, I'll give you these scriptures. <coughs> you can write them down. Matthew 5 and 18, Jesus said, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Matthew 14 and 25, Mark 13 and 31, and Luke 21 and 33, Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. Faith in His Word is the only thing that you are going to be able to stand on, especially in the last days, but always. It's always been this way. It's faith in God's Word that caused the walls of Jericho to come down. Joshua didn't have his faith in the men blowing the trumpets. Joshua didn't have his faith in the priest that held the ark on their shoulders. Joshua didn't have his faith in the shout that they were going to make on the seventh day. Joshua had his faith in the fact that God had promised him on the seventh day, if you'll blow the trumpets, if you'll shout, if you'll march around the walls, the walls will come down. Why? Because his word spoke it and there was nothing, there was no devil, there was no demon, there was no force. All of the great armies of Canaan, led, none of the places, no, no, nobody, no army, no force could stop it because God had spoken it. When Jesus said, see, that's why there wasn't no fight going on while Jesus was dead. Peter says in the book of Acts, the second chapter, and you can look that up, do you good to do some Bible study. He said it was not possible that death would hold Jesus. Not possible. There was no, as Carmen wrote in his song, Jesus was down and the referee was counting one, two, and they had to count them backwards. But anyway, he was never on the ropes, Brother Bill. He had already said, I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it up. And he said, my words are spirit and they are life. He said, they will deliver me up. I will be crucified. On the third day, I will rise again. And when he spoke those words, there was no force that could stop it. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Amen. There was no force that could stop him. That's why Peter said it was impossible. It was impossible. It was not possible that he not raise from the dead because he had already spoke it into existence just like it was impossible for darkness to hold back the light when God said, let there be light. Light had to be because God's Word is eternal. It is all powerful. It is omniscient. It is all eternal. Amen. It is all powerful. It is everything that we need Amen. to put our faith in today. Amen. Amen. Oh, there were smart men in the Bible who knew the Old Testament Scriptures. And they thought that knowing the Scripture was enough. Just head knowledge. But Jesus said, search the Scriptures. That's where you think you have eternal life. He said, but those Scriptures that you're searching, they testify of Me. Amen. You see, you can't separate Jesus from the Word. When you put your faith in the Word of God, you're putting your faith in in Jesus. Amen? Amen? When you're putting your faith in Jesus, you're putting your faith in the Word of God. You cannot separate the two. He is the Word that was made flesh and dwelt among us. And that's the only place you can put your faith today. And we find in Matthew, the seventh chapter, go with me. I'm going to be there for a minute. I'm going to show you something. Matthew, the seventh chapter, first book Old Test of the New Testament. Matthew, the seventh chapter, the 24th verse. Brother Bill probably quote you these. Matthew 7 and 24. There's just some scriptures that get stuck in your crawl and you just can't get them out. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Matthew 7 and 24. And we've all preached on this a hundred times. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, what were the sayings of him? They were the Word. Yeah. Amen? Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. Now what do we begin this talking about 
We begin talking about how James said, I will show you my faith by my works, by doing something. Amen? You don't do His Word unless you put your faith in His Word. So we find here Jesus telling us what happens to a man who puts his faith in the Word of God. Amen. He said, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. <clears throat> faith in God's Word. And be, having faith in God's Word, then you act on it. You choose to believe it. You choose to trust it. You choose to stand on God's Word. And it says that the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. Then we find another man. This man says, Jesus said, Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not or in other words puts not his faith in that because James said, I will show you my faith by my works so if we see no action, oh, we can shout we got faith all day long. But if we don't never do any, if we don't never do anything with it, what is it? We can talk about how much we believe God's word, but never standing on it, never practicing it, never applying it to our life. The Bible says, "Faith without works is dead." Amen. 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 Every one that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not does not put his faith in. A lot of people's heard the word, but they've chose not to believe. A lot of people has heard preaching. They've heard sermons, but they've chose to turn a deaf ear to what God has said. He says, he, he will be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Did you hear that? Now listen, both these men built homes. They both built a house. Amen? I don't say anything about the material that they used. Maybe they both used, maybe they may both went to Ace Hardware and got the same kind of wood. But the important thing Jesus is emphasizing here is the foundation that they built Amen. upon. Amen? Amen? Oh, we got people today building on a lot of different things. They got their faith in the stock market. They got their faith in the Roman Catholic Church. They got their faith in Islam. They got their faith in Allah. They got their faith in Buddha. They got their faith in Muhammad. What happens to this man? The same rain descends upon his house. The same, let's picture today as if these two men built their homes in the same general area. Except one built his house on a firm foundation, the other built it on sand. Maybe the same storm that was hitting hit them both at the same time. Amen? Amen. Maybe it rained on the just man, the man that had his faith in God's Word, at the same time it was raining on the other man. Amen. And if you saw it, you'd think, well, this is a nice house. You might have went over to Leroy's and his house built on a rock, and the rains hit it, and the floods hit the storm and the winds were blowing against it and it survived. And you thought, well, Bubba would be all right. He just lives down the way a piece, you know. Same storm hit down there, but he should be fine. But when you go down there, you find what? His house fell and great was the fall of it. Why? Because his house was not built on a solid foundation. If you build, if you spend your whole life putting your faith in everything, you can have a good life. There's a lot of good people in hell today. Amen? Yeah. A lot of good people on their way to hell today. You may have a good life. You may have a lot of good works, but if your faith is not rooted and grounded, if it's not built on the rock, if your faith is not in God's Word, you will not be able to stand Amen. the test of time today. The Bible says that his house fell and great was the fall of it. He had spent time working on it, building it, putting it together. He had built his house probably with just as much sweat as the other guy had. Put just as much time into it. Worked hard on it. Had his heart in it. What happens? Because he had his foundation wrong. Same thing is going to happen to you today if you have your faith in anything other than the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And when we put our faith in God's Word, we will automatically begin. Because see, that's what it's all about. These things go hand in hand. When the little woman went to get the meal out of the meal barrel to fix the light, fix Elijah something to eat. She did so because she had faith in God's Word. When you have faith in God's Word, you begin to stand on God's Word. When you begin to stand on God's Word, you begin to act upon God's Word. You begin to look at the circumstances and say, well, I know that the bills are due. I don't have any money. The home's been repossessed. Things are going down the toilet, it seems. But, hallelujah, <laughs> all things work together for good to them that love God and the call according to His purpose. Amen. Amen. All things work together for my good. That's His Word. 
You can stand on that. I might tell you something today. You may not be able to depend on that, but you can depend on God's Word. Amen. His Word is faithful. It is true. I told you over there in John, the first chapter, it said that in the beginning was the Word. Yeah. In Revelation 19 11, we find that there was a... It says, John says, I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. It says that his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Yeah. I'm reading from Revelation the 19th chapter. The 11th through the 13th verse. This is the closest thing we have to the original today. And it tells us that John saw heaven open. This is getting pretty close to the end here. Amen? Amen. We see then how that the Word was in the beginning and the Word is at the end. It says it's faithful and true. Who is? The Word of God that came forth out of heaven. Amen? With a vesture dipped in blood talking about Jesus, the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us the one that was there in the beginning, whenever God said, let us make man in our image, when God spoke, let there be light, and light had to come, the Word of God is eternal. It is forever. You can depend on it. You can build your life upon it. It is the Word of God. I saw heaven open and a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes are as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had... A name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Faithful, true, eternal. My goodness, why in the world wouldn't we want to build our life on that today? Amen. Why would we want to hang our hopes this morning <clears throat> on the stock market that may crash today? Why in the world would we want to hang our hopes on our education? Because the minute you learn something, they come up with something that's smarter than you are. Yeah. Right. Amen? Always. And yet things still seem to remain the same. When I was a child in school, many, many, many moons ago, they taught us the metric system. They said, by the time you're grown, you won't be measuring in inches and feet. Well, guess what? Forty years later, we're still measuring in inches and feet. Amen? Man has grown in knowledge, yet they remain kind of simple whenever you think about it. Why? Because knowledge cannot save you. Knowledge is not a place you can put your faith. You can't put your faith in man's Word, but you can put your faith in the Word of God. It was there in the beginning. It will be there in the end. And whatever time slot you fall into in between, it will remain. It will be there for you. God's Word is the same. Amen. The same things that were written down 2,000 years ago are as much alive and as much powerful as if the ink was still wet. Amen. Amen? Because it's God's Word. This is what I built my life on. Amen? The Word of God. This is where my faith lies. Within these pages we find the revelation of the Redeemer. Within these pages we find the revelation of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Within these pages we find that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Within these pages we find that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And within these pages we find promises that will get us from earth to glory if we'll put our faith in it and believe what God said simply because God spoke it and knowing if God speaks it into existence that there's no devil, there's no demon, there's no power on earth that can stop it because it's His Word. I don't know if you're getting that this morning. Amen. I hope you are. It's His Word. You can count on His Word. You can build your life upon His yeah. Word. You can't hang your hopes on the shout today because there's going to come a time you don't feel like shouting. Amen. You can't hang your hopes today on the dance because there's going to come a time you don't feel like dancing. When you're laying on your deathbed, and you're reaching for something that you can hold on to and put your faith in that will comfort you. It's going to be God's Word. Amen. It's going to be God's Word. Amen? Amen? He sent His Word to heal us. 
He sent His Word to become flesh. To walk this earth 33 and a half years to heal. Everywhere He went, He healed. He set free. He delivered. Why? Because people put their faith in Him. His Word. He was His Word. Amen. You can't separate them. They're inseparable today. The Bible even goes so far as to calling His name. In the beginning, it called Him the Word. Did it not? Did I not read you that in John the first chapter? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Then we have, over the book of Revelations, we see heaven opened and this conqueror come forth in a vesture dipped with blood. His name is true and faithful. His name is the Word of God. You can count on God's Word today. Amen? My goodness. It'll see you through. In the beginning was the Word. Amen? When the Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, that alone ought to tell us how important it is. Whenever we see Jesus in the wilderness of temptation, and the devil comes to him and says, Oh, make these stones into bread. Cast yourself down. Look at these kingdoms. I'll give you all this stuff. And every time he says to the devil, It is written. Amen? Amen. What is written? His word. Amen. And he wasn't even talking about it. He didn't have to show him, Look here. It's written here. No. They can burn every Bible they get their hands on. They don't do away with the word of God. Amen. Amen? They're doing that in Iran now. Stupider people have done that throughout the years. Kingdoms and kings and rulers have tried to kill God's Word. But it's like one of those things, you know. And I know this is a bad thing. Don't go thinking I've been watching horror movies. I watched one about 40 years ago. They kept killing this monster. Maybe it's the creature from the Black Lagoon. They thought he was dead. And they'd turn around and there he'd jump out of the bushes again. Yeah. They thought they destroyed the Word of God. Yeah, there it is. Amen. Amen. They kill Wycliffe. Some of the other brothers that begin to put the word in English translation where we can understand we're going to kill them. We'll pay them money to bring us their King James Bibles. It wasn't King James at the time, but about 90% of what it was is in the King James Bible. We'll pay them to bring that to us and we'll destroy it. We'll get rid of it. Oh, they didn't know you can't get rid of this. Amen. You can burn it. You can rip it up. You can take it away, but it's written. Not just on tables of stone, but on the tables of men's hearts. Right. Not only on the tables of men's hearts, but this world is founded upon it. Right. you hear what I said? This word, this world was formed by the word of God. Amen. The foundation of the world rests upon the word of God. Amen. Can't do away with it. You can't kill it. You can burn it. But it remains. Amen. It's like the bush in the wilderness that Moses saw with God's voice coming out of it. Why did he turn aside to look at it? It was not some important big thing that a bush caught on fire. That happened all the time out there in that hot desert. But he turned aside to see because the bush was on fire but it was not consumed. You can't kill it. You can't stop it. Oh, you can try. Like I said, kings have tried, queens have tried, rulers have tried, Amen. nations have tried, but you can't stop it. The devil has tried since the Garden of Eden. Whenever he twisted it, when him and Eve got into that twisted conversation about God's Word, he's tried to stop it. You can bring out a new version every year. You know, we've got the New International Perversion, and we've got the good news for modern man. Amen. We've got the Massage Bible, and we've got all these different translations. You can change it. You can try to rip pages out. You can say that don't, depend, that, don't, that don't pertain to us anymore, but it's still. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's Word will remain. Amen. You can put your faith in God's Word today. It is eternal. It is forever. It was in the beginning. It will be in the end. It is the only thing that's going to get you to heaven today is if you put your faith in God's Word and say, now, wait a minute, Brother Billy. I thought you were talking about God's Word. What, what about Jesus? Jesus and God's Word, same thing. Amen? When, when God spoke for His Son to come into being, that's who came forth was Jesus. Amen? The Word of God in flesh. Amen? Rolled in this old earthly body who walked forth and, and began to preach what? The Word of God. He began to... Be a living example of God's Word. And I'm going to say this morning that if you put your faith in His Word, you'll make it. Why? Because His Word 
will always point you to the Son. And the Son will always point you to the Word. Because they're joined at the hip. No, they're more than joined at the hip. They are one. His Word and Him are one. Amen? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Amen? Amen. My goodness. <clears throat> I don't have time to go into the rest of this. Yeah, are you still in Revelation? the 19th chapter. If you go on down a little bit farther, where it says that He has a vesture that is dipped in blood and His name is called the Word of God, it says that the armies which were in heaven followed Him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Revelation 19 and 15, now listen to this. It says, Out of His mouth goeth a sharp sword, and that with it He should smite the nations, and He shall rule them with a rod of iron. And He treadeth the winepress for the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And if you go down to the 21st verse, and the remnant talking about the enemies of the Lord were slain with what? The sword of Him that set upon the horse which, which sword proceeded out of His mouth. The book of Hebrews tells us that God's Word is what? Quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Brother Beal read about the armor of God and it talks about having the Word of God. Amen? Amen. Having the shield of faith. Faith in what? Faith in God's Word. Everybody has faith. You worked 60 hours this week having faith that your employer was going to give you a check at the end of the work week. Amen? But that ain't what's going to quench the fiery darts of the devil. The shield of faith that will quench the fiery darts of the devil is the Word of God. Right. Having your faith in the Word of God today will quench the fiery darts of the devil. You know why? Because whenever he says you can't make it, Sister Nancy, you say, oh yes I can. The Bible says, the Word of God says... No weapon formed against me will prosper. The Word of God says in all things give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The Word of God says that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. The Word of God tells me in the end I will be a winner and you will be a loser. So it doesn't matter what you tell me, devil. It doesn't matter what kind of doubt you try to contrive up in my mind. I know that I will make it not because I feel it, not because boy, I really feel holy today. No, but because I'm rooted and grounded and I've got my foundation laid and my faith is in the Word of God today. Today. Amen. That's why I'm going to make it. Amen? Amen? Now if I ever choose to take my faith out from the Word of God and put it in something else, I ain't going to make it. But as long as I trust His Word, I'm going to make it. As long as you trust His Word, you're going to make it. As long as you put your faith in Him, you are going to make it. Amen? Amen. My goodness. <laughs> Jesus said that His words were spirit and life. That's John 6 and 63. His word, it, become, it causes things to come to life. And if He said you can make it, you can make it. Put your faith in God's word today. Amen? Amen. Stand on it. It has been tried. It is faithful. Amen? And it is true. Tried, faithful, and true. Tried, faithful, and true. God's Word. When all else fails, God's Word will remain. When heaven and earth passes away, God's Word will remain. When the storm passes over, whenever the storm blows and it, the, the, the winds and the, and the winds rage, when the storm ceases, you will remain standing only if your faith is in God's Word. Amen? Amen. Only if your life is built upon God's Word word this morning. If it's built on anything else, you will not make it. Amen? There's not no maybe you'll make it. I've heard people say, well, as long as I'm just making it in by the skin of my teeth. If you make it in, it won't be by the skin of your teeth. It'll be by having your faith in God's Word. Amen? If you'll have your faith in God's Word, you can make it. If you'll have your faith in God's Word, you will realize in the morning whenever you get up and you're facing everything but the kitchen sink has been thrown at you. Amen? You will realize that you're still saved. You're still on your way to heaven. God is still on the throne. Ain't nothing changed except circumstances. And circumstances can't change the Word of God. Amen? And if He said you're going to make it, you're going to make it. Put your faith in His Word today. Build your life upon His Word today. And you will make it. Amen? Amen. I got more. We'll reserve that for next Sunday, I suppose. Hallelujah. Someone else have something this morning before we go?